Somewhat haphazard, a little bit hectic today. One computer down, another one uh, almost working. And my guest Dave, David Sneakus. Sneakus into the uh, Super Bowl. No, never mind. It's too cold, David. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, you know, the, 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 uh, but the Patriots might be playing. So, uh, uh, who knows? <laughs> I, I I watched a video of the last ice bowl. Uh, it was uh, 20 degrees below zero, and I think Green Bay was playing the Dallas Cowboys. A little disadvantage, you know, us us Cowboys down there in Texas. We 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 ain't used to seeing ice form on the football. <laughs> Well, the, the, the North always wins. The Civil War, the North always wins. If you look at all wars that go on in countries and nations and uh, ge geographically, the North always wins. We are, I think that's a general statement, but uh, it's pretty much uh, can be verified uh, throughout uh, if, if, with enough study of history and wars and conflicts. Well, hey, uh, anyway, good morning. We're, good morning. Good morning. You know, I, I'm I'm still kind of of the opinion that the South will rise again. I've even been invited to go uh, uh, play the part of a Civil War general down in uh, New Orleans in a couple of weeks. Oh, you look like you can play the part for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been a I've been a rebel for ten thousand years, so. It, you know, it's not the South that's the problem. Uh, you know, if you want to say the South will rise again, they will. It's just, uh, it, uh, uh, in my opinion, the uh, mean factor, the, the giving in, like the Indians, and uh, this is just my personal opinion, the uh, Indians were overtaken by the white men. I mean, let's just make that a general statement. And then uh, th their acceptance of this whole atrocity that the white man has put on them, the, the stealing of the land and the uh, taking away of their rights of the ownership, etc., uh, I think that they're they're picking up all this uh, lottery money and it's all this uh, stuff at the gambling joint so they can buy it back. <laughs> well, you know, in in uh, uh, a few years back, uh, about ten, and this may be one of the reasons they tried to kill me. I uh, I came up with the whole idea of the uh, Liberty Villages, the Liberty Village concept. Mm -hmm. And I should admit, it, it ain't nothing to you original because uh, we had uh, these little villages all across the country, all across the country, this small town America surrounded by farms, windmills on every farm, and the, uh, a friend of mine by the name of Richard Kelly Hoskins said the uh, foundation of every civilization is the self-sufficient family farm. Now, up on under today's show on my website with your name up there and link to this show I've got this quote by from you from uh, your website that says from Paul Newman said I just happen to think that in life we need to be a little like the farmer who puts back into the soil what he takes out right. recognizing the wisdom of these words let us begin rebuilding our economy from the ground up asking what would it the world be like if we invested 50% of our assets within 50 miles of where we live. And what if uh, there were a new generation of companies that gave away 50% of their profits 
What if there were 50% more organic matter in our soil 50 years from now? I mean, we can add the Indian statement, you know, only when, only when man pollutes every river and pollutes all the air in the rivers and can't eat the fish will he understand you can't eat money. <laughs> so, so you know, the religion that was brought over by the white man is this money-orientated religion, you know. This is the twelfth and final religion, of course. I can wonder. And uh, once we get once we get away from this money aspect of accumulating it, getting a bigger bank account, and, uh, a millionaire making another million, and we see living life uh, with good quality food, then the, 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 the slow money movement's all about that. You're about that with your virtual uh, 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 village village there, and uh, I am too. I'm I'm getting back to the land uh, this week uh, this year. Uh, with a group of people uh, to uh, basically make it through a transition in the next three to five years, see if we can be self-sufficient, because I do understand the, uh, the Benjamin Franklin money, uh, the, uh, the Benjamin Franklin quote where he said that there's three ways for nations to be successful or prosperous, and one is through uh, uh, imperialism, where, where you go and force yourself on other people, especially with our currency and our armies, and the second way is to cheat them through commerce, and the fourth way is through agriculture, the miracle of uh, the getting, taking advantage of the 10,000% uh, interest rate that uh, a, a seed can give you planted in the soil. So uh, once people get sick enough uh, of the monetary system, uh, they see how the bankers are, uh, are working, they see how the, uh, the, the GMOs are affecting us, w once they see all these things that it's you know it's an enlightenment in a certain sense once they see the food is most important then uh, the understanding of food and, and the understanding of money uh you get you prefer food over money 100 percent of the time i don't care when you live in our society well you know this uh now now when i was planning the liberty village what i was uh, envisioning because mm -hmm. i live 30 miles outside of the nearest town what i was envisioning was uh, uh, a self-sufficient family farm restored using mm -hmm. veterans, giving veterans a place to live. And ultimately I came up with the, the concept was low cost structures. What do we need mm -hmm. a 2,000 square foot home for? I live in a 37 foot by 8 foot fifth wheel and I'm pretty comfortable. I'm, uh, yep. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy and I can, if the neighborhood turns bad, I can move it. But yep. Uh, yeah, the, the that, that, that's for a single person. Now, don't forget a village consists of, I don't know, more than one person up to 40. I'm going to take a guess, 40, 50, 60 people maximum. After that, you're talking about too much conflict and elbow room and all that Davy Crockett and Daniel Boone stuff. Uh, there's no room for me over here. Uh, and, uh, uh, it, 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 and it evolved, and for me, it evolved around the factor of uh, not having a food printable in the community. Uh, for example, uh, you know, you can start a bowling league, you can start a football league, and you you get together over football or bowling. But if you don't get together over food, the community will break up. That's, uh, yep. uh, that's a fact in a, in a sense of my own personal experience. That's that's okay. why I, I, I modified my... Uh, or expanded. Actually, I expanded my plan mm -hmm. for the Liberty Village concept. When people told me, "Well, Clay, I, I got a job. I got I got to get work. I got to have work. I can't live on a farm. I can't live in the country. I, I, yeah, right, I can't yeah. drive 30 yeah. miles to work." So I oh. said, "Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, our our neighborhoods those were built on old family farms. Why don't we just grow food, not grass, in the backyard?" Mm -hmm. and put solar, put wind on our on top of our homes the way we did on the, on the farms coming across the country. We pumped our water out of the, out of the wells with uh, wind. Right. You, you don't take your friend there, and, and, and uh, a lot of friends of mine, I, I believe, and this is my personal belief, that, you know, people have no security in owning their land. They may think they own their own home, but I'm sure 
uh, if you went down the street anywhere in the United States and asked them if they own their home, they would say, no, I'm not the homeowner, the bank owns my home. Or uh, some other entity I'm renting, and so the landlord owns the home. We have lost our connection, ownership, or guardianship of the land. That's, that's a personal feeling that I have. And uh, the, the, if, if, in, in, the, in the ability to stay in a situation like you're in for individuals is nearly impossible uh, for, for with the expansive food eating that uh, an Indians call drugs, and one of them being alcohol and cocaine and other drugs. And uh, marijuana may or may not be in that a category because it is a... Um, a, 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 an earthly plant-based substance where you can use it for enlightenment because it doesn't get you back to reality <laughs> because it gets you so far out sometimes. Uh, but it, but that secure feeling, it to me, doesn't happen until you start eating food from the land, not food from a factory, not food from a, a, a boxes and TV propaganda, but the, moment, but the actual sit-down um, uh, cooking food that came from the earth for, uh, uh, as close as you can, and the closest you can get is your home garden or your home farm or your self-sustained unit village, of course. So that, that's the problem I see uh, in America today. They have no idea of land ownership, which has been the... Uh, the agenda, I believe, of the bankers and the elite and the money people, because that's the, that's they know that. <laughs> every every I have told people for the last twenty years oh, yeah. that any time a communist regime takes over a country, and I became aware of this after I volunteered for the army, took an oath to defend the Constitution, and I read mm -hmm. it. And since we were going out to fight communism, I started studying what communism was. Yeah. And I've got the ten planks of the Communist Manifesto right here. You know, plank number five is, uh, you know, central bank. You know, mm -hmm. uh, graduated income tax. And, of mm -hmm. course, number nine is corporate farms. Can you say Monsanto? Yeah. And, and well, the, the, the thing, any time a communist regime takes over a country, they go after three classes of people in order. They go after the farmers first because they don't want you being able to pay, feed yourself. That's yeah. why they set up the corporate farms. And two, they go after the intelligentsia. That's anybody that's smart enough to know or educated enough to know what they're doing. And mm -hmm. third, they go after the veterans and the law enforcement that are loyal to the old regime. They went after the farmers in the 30s. They took away hemp, and regardless of whether you yeah. you yeah. smoke it or not, hemp mm -hmm. is the most productive plant and the most beneficial plant on the planet. It would uh, yeah. it was uh, written in the Bible as the uh, plant of renown. I mean, 10,000 products made out of hemp. They stole it from us. Sure, yeah. that that's because that's their agenda. You see, these people. They, they, well, we're talking now, and they get they got together over these over these families who were deceptive money changers. I mean, you know, quote unquote, Jesus threw them out of the temple two thousand years ago, two thousand thirteen years ago, or two thousand fourteen, whenever. And uh, they still have that strong influence because there there is a uh, from my own experience. A money need. I go, like I have money, you know. I gotta have money in my pocket, and I gotta uh, have some kind of value, and it's a value system. Where, when in effect, it's 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 bogus. But it's it's planted in people's minds because it is an easy concept to grasp. It's a childlike mentality that money is gonna quote unquote save you or uh, keep the boogeyman away or. Uh, uh, the, the, the mortgage people, and you got to pay your taxes, and all this thing over uh, over centuries has ingrained myself and uh, many of my friends growing up for the first 55 years of my life. It was just, oh, yeah, just just go to work and pay your taxes, and you'll be fine. Yeah, uh, that mentality is too simple. We have to understand. Uh, a few of us are understanding the Indian mentality, where the ownership of the land is total. All of us own the land. And if we respect the land and, and, and uh, see it uh, 
uh, see its productivity and see its beauty and miraculousness, then we will not destroy it like we are today. And, you know, and I'm guilty myself. <laughs> and, and we still have the buffalo. Uh, anytime we got hungry we uh, are cold, we could go out and uh, kill a buffalo and give thanks to the Great Spirit for providing with us. Yeah, you know, from, uh, from this guy, uh, Red Jack, and I don't know if you know him, uh, from 1805, you, you have got our country, but I'm not satisfied. You want to force a religion upon us, too, you know. <laughs> so uh, they, they called the Great Spirit. He had scattered them over the country and, ta and taught us how to take them. That's the buffalo. He had ca caused the earth to produce corn for bread. All of this he has done for his red children because he loved them. We had some disputes about our hunting, hunting ground. They were generally settled without the shedding of much blood. But an evil day came upon us. Your forefather, quote, 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 the white man, crossed the great water, the, the Atlantic, and landed upon this island. Their numbers were small. They found us friends and not enemies. They told us that they had fled from their own country on account of wicked men. We had come here to enjoy their religion. And, and we asked them, they asked us for a small seat, and then we took pity on them and granted their request, and they sat down among us. We gave them corn and meat. They gave us poison in return. <laughs> that, you know, I'm, I'm a white man, too, of course. And, you know, you know, we're getting the, the white man's propaganda mentality is this, I am the expert. I know better than you, this egocentric uh, necessity necessity uh, that seems to prevail uh, to, to just uh, abuse uh, the land and our, ent uh, not entitlement, but our uh, uh, group, uh, our group decisions on how we should be using the planet because most of us just are looking for food, clothing, shelter, and something to do uh, during the day and, and uh, have uh, sexual play at night uh, and, and enjoy life. So. Uh, uh, I think, I think once we can admit that, uh, the, 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 the run that every Monday to Friday you're running to pay your mortgage and your health care, and uh, which gets me to the point of my real uh, journey here, is to show people they already own their own home, and they already have their own health care, and it's free. But that's such a glib statement. People well, just you know, turned off by my statement. You know, they, they, uh, I, I was told that there are two classes of people that live in adobe homes. Uh -huh. The very rich and the very poor. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and what yeah. adobe I mean you you yeah. can create your home and I've got I've got a link up on libertyvillages.org okay, about something. about the uh, uh, earth ships. I mean you you can build your house out of the dirt you're sitting on. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I've got this quote. I've got this quote I've got to share with you. Okay. The Indian chief, Two Eagles, was asked by a high-ranking government official, you've observed the white man for 90 years. You've seen his wars and his technological advances. You've seen yeah. his progress and the damage he's done. Considering all these events, in your opinion, where did the white man go wrong? He said, when white men find their land, Indians running it, no taxes, no debt, plenty beaver, plenty <laughs> beaver, plenty buffalo, clean water, Women did all the work, medicine man free, Indian man spend all day hunting and fishing, all night having sex. And the chief leaned back and smiled, only the white man is dumb enough to think he can improve on a system uh, like that. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, I, I guess, you know, the, the, the sexual pleasure that people gain or not, don't gain at night is really conducive of how they're living their lifestyle because if you, uh, sex can run that whole thing that money runs. You can run the money to the poor, to the richest millionaire. You could run food from the worst food to the best food. And the same thing with sex. You could have the worst sex and you could have the best sex. So uh, when people start understanding there's a gamut of, uh, of, of the ways how to enjoy life, and it is a mindset. Uh, uh, because you can have a million dollars in your bank account and be the nastiest person, or you can have a million dollars and be a very generous person. So it, it is how our mind is set, and that's what the propagandists know. Uh, you, you, you're, you're, how you view life, your belief system is the total 
aspect of everything that you've learned through uh, your parents or your teachers or your priest or your rabbi <coughs> and uh, or your schooling or your street knowledge or whatever or books that you've read and we've read a lot of books I understand and so have I and when you have this knowledge then that mindset is yours I and mean, it's not anybody else's because you're going to get a viewpoint of your parents etc 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 and the TV and radio and the media are controlled, as we know, by the, the elite so that you don't hear about uh, the Indian philosophy of way of life. You constantly hear, make more money, you've got to get this job, uh, hey, here's a loan and you can do this. And the money religion is so strong. Uh, I, I battled with it for uh, seven or eight years myself. And... Uh, I was because I was brought up Catholic, and I I battled that for thirty years, and then I battled the money religion thing, and until you you, you uh, I, I lived in a teepee for a, a year out in Alaska with a you know thin layer between me and thirty below, and I know how to live out there. I, I you know I know coffee is uh, not as good to have for breakfast as oatmeal might be when you're freezing out there, you know. So you learn these things as you live, and unless people get that. In, in, in America, we're so comfortable in our, our football, in our uh, ballet classes, in our TV, and computers, and, and, and you know, so we're so distracted, and we have to be, because if we're not, then we're going to start thinking uh, how to get back to a good quality of life, and we are, in, in my, from my own experience, we're totally scared shitless to go back to a good life. I'm, I, I'm serious about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are, and that's uh, that's the uh, that's result of programming. That's from watching Miami Vice. That's uh, from uh, you know the the I tell I tell people they don't call it programming for nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Now what's happening? What's happening right now? You know, I, I said I came up with this whole concept for Liberty Village for restoring the foundation of every civilization, which is the mm -hmm. self-sufficient family farm. Yep. And I've told people, hey, I'm the canary in the coal mine. You know, when they come after me, you're next. <laughs> They'll come after right. me first. Now, on my Facebook site, which is Free American 69, Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get. Okay. Yeah. I. I. I've got some videos up there. One of them is about Earthships. How their people are building totally unique houses, not these little square boxes set on the neighborhood where your house looks just like your neighbor's house, except for uh, what color paint you want to put on it. And uh, mm -hmm. I've got. I've got one story here. And I said, for remember my Liberty Village concept I came up with shortly before they tried to kill me? Remember I told you to consider me the canary in the coal mine? I uh, see libertyvillages.org where I tell you to grow food, not grass, and power your home. Armed government teams target Los Angeles County individuals who grow their own food and produce. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in, in Arlington, Texas, just a little bit north of where I am, there's a uh, there's a group up here that have something called Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. and they're growing their own food and they're feeding the people all around them, and the jackbooted thugs came and stomped on their ta tomato plants, mm -hmm. didn't find any drugs, no pot, no nothing there, yeah. Yeah. and and they. That's intimidation. They're trying to put them out of business. They're trying to yeah. keep people from growing food in their own backyard. I know. Well, that's the same thing as McDonald's would try to do with their logo, you know, the big, the big yellow sign, or uh, Apple, or, well, I don't know about Apple, or, or uh, IBM. The, the, the commodity that they're selling is cash or Federal Reserve note. You're up against trillions of dollars where they can hire people because if they, uh, because the money is so powerful, they can hire people to do that. You know, the money, they, they can give them thousand dollars, millions of dollars, or whatever it takes, they just know what it takes. And they hire these people to quote unquote, obey the law that the, the regulators put in or some kind of statue that's put in. And that's what we're dealing with, the franchise of money. 
and, and the, the money has to have this enforcement just as McDonald's has to have their lawyers enforce the, the 3M, the, the M. You can't have a McDonald's, you know, or, 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 or 10,000 other uh, icons that are out there because they because quote unquote trademark. So money, the Federal Reserve note, mainly, and throughout the world, we don't go into uh, Iraq and Iran and uh, Afghanistan because of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, oil. We go there because we want to uphold the United the Federal Reserve note currency. We have to forcefully make people, uh, nations, use our money so that we can buy stuff there. And that's the strength of the uh, enforcement. And that force will dissipate as people b become educated and knowledgeable about food and money. Uh, and uh, the, the, this this is all dissipating now in my in my current belief system, and it's just going to take time for for people to see the, the quote unquote yin and yang or the change that goes on in the in the world today from uh, this forced currency to accepting the currency, you know, and and, and just like anything else, uh, you force anything. It has to have a, its uh, front and back or reaction. So uh, yeah. we're just gonna hang in there, Clay. You know, do our uh, uh, our continued blog talks. Uh, get more people interested in that. Uh, and one by one, they will. Uh, as nature heals, uh, and the the, uh, the energy from the Milky Way comes more and more strong to the Earth, people will start waking up and say. What am I doing working eight to five? You know, my father, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Whoa, what, what have I done here? You know, and I retire on what? Uh, the money I didn't get, you had to get gone. <laughs> the money you thought you saved, even if it was a million, can't buy what you thought a million would buy uh, 40, 50 years ago. That, that is for sure. And uh, uh, we've, we've been, uh, uh, we, we haven't been disclosed on a, in our, public uh, educational system what money really is so uh, or, or what food really is by the way and what food is best and what money how to use money for, for its best as a uh, uh, as a tool rather than being a slave to it but well for for yeah, 20 yeah. years I've been trying to tell people about this with this radio show and with the free America yeah, 20 yeah, years yeah. ago I I, uh, I had a gentleman on my show that had a tape out, a uh, CD, or it started out as a as a uh, uh, cassette called "Dead Doctors Don't Lie," telling people that the cause of every disease is the food you're eating. If you're not getting the if you're not getting the minerals that you need, right. and then I, I came out with my own line called uh, "Heritage and Health," and uh, I. Uh, created a line of colonial minerals mm -hmm. because the uh, guy in Dead Doctors Don't Lie said, man, you know, the people that clean out the septic tanks said the bottom of the septic tanks are filled with uh, one-a-day vitamins. Yeah, right. Yeah. They just go right through you. And my biochemist that put together this, uh, this uh, line of colonial minerals included something she called fulvic acid. She said they had to get it from prehistoric plant life mm -hmm. because the soil in today's farms mm -hmm. has been so depleted and so destroyed that mm -hmm. you can't uh, you can't you can't get the minerals that you need out of it. And the fulvic acid restores cellular damage. It mm -hmm. now there's only one plant on the planet that has roots that go deep enough to extract that fulvic acid from the soil. Yeah, what's that? Hemp. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> that that that's why it's uh, that's why it's so. Uh, 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 let's see. Uh, that's hallucinogenic. It's so uh, um, it's it's so popular today. Because the, the the people who are not eating uh, a good quality of food are going towards hemp uh, now uh, to restore themselves, and, but they're going to get. In my opinion, it's just a little too much yin to, to handle for most of us, and they'll just be uh, sheeple and people 
who the group may or may not wake up from their uh, from their experience of how well, it's Well, it's not. I, I had uh, I had a lady uh, ask me yesterday. I've never smoked marijuana. I don't know what people see in it. I said, Well, I don't know what people see in tobacco. Yeah. I don't like tobacco, but yeah, I've been smoking thing. pot for 45 years, and guess what? I can't even get medical marijuana because I'm too healthy. I don't have anything wrong with it. So the reason I don't have anything wrong with me is because I've been smoking this for 45 years. Yeah, you can buy it in Colorado now. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I've got, I, I, may, I may end up moving to Colorado, but that's, uh, again, even there, they're, they're trying to put so much legislation on it. You can't just grow a plant in your backyard. You gotta, you gotta conform to the government. You gotta conform to this. You gotta conform to that. They're doing the same thing in Europe right now with heritage seeds. Again, yeah, they're trying to force you into using Monsanto. You, you, you can't just grow a plant here. You gotta, you gotta have it approved by first. And that's what they're gonna do in Colorado. That's why this whole medical marijuana thing is bullshit, David. It's it's it's. Uh, why should I pay a doctor who has been prescribing poisons mm -hmm. for his whole career? Why should I pay a doctor to get a prescription so I can grow a plant that God gave me in my backyard? Well, well there you go. Not, not to, to be in close to anarchy, you know, people have to stop paying their taxes, and they have to stop paying their mortgage, and they have to stop paying their uh, uh, health care costs for at least 10 years, and they can educate themselves if they stop this, the, 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 uh, the, the gerbil in the spinning wheel, with that animal that just continues to turn in the, in the spinning wheel, and we're all on that wheel, we're all on that uh, carousel, of making money, spending money, making money, spending money, when in fact educating ourselves is not easy. It's, uh, you know, the pablum we've been fed, the sugar and the alcohol and the meat, meat and sugar are the, the, two, the two products that uh, the human body needs, protein and uh, carbohydrates, are easily gained through the eating of meat and, sh and uh, white sugar. So when, they, when that uh, becomes addictive, and, and, and it took me seven or eight years to get off meat and sugar uh, uh, to, to, to find out where how, how I could balance that. It's so difficult. And nobody it, it, that is, in, in my opinion, uh, that's, that's living today, eating meat and sugar uh, is, as, as, a, uh, uh, as a vice, and, and eating too much of it, uh, I'm not saying that I'm not going to be bad against meat or anything, but just, the, just too much of it, becomes so strong. It's like putting gasoline in your car, Clay. You know, you can run your car on gasoline at 50 to 100 miles an hour, uh, but you can run your car on water, too. So it's the same thing with your in digestive system. You could run your uh, body on meat short term and go real, real fast in the spinning wheel, or you can change the protein to a, 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 a vegetable quality protein that, that are the beans and the tofu tempeh and the uh, other products that are out there, uh, but you have to get a peristaltic action. You've got to exercise. You have to change the magnesium-centered cell of the plant life to an iron-centered cell. You see the cow and the horse and the chicken, they already did that. They already changed the plant life to a, a magnesium-centered cell to an iron-centered cell, and they've done that for you. So you're using the meat as a... Uh, middleman for your quote unquote life and if you can if when, once you start seeing that aspect in my opinion then then you have to start exercising and exercising meaning uh, lots of things it could be uh, mowing the lawn chopping wood carrying water building a house whatever but the exercise adds oxygen so when you add oxygen to a magnesium centered cell you get the iron centered cell and uh, that's what uh, uh, man is made of iron-centered cells, and when you, when you do need to get meat-centered cell from a cow or a chicken, the iron-centered cell rather, then that next phase is deterioration and decomposition and stagnation and the big word putrefaction. So you're putrefying your body by eating an excessive amount of meat. Not, say, not saying meat is bad, 
Uh, but the buffalo and the meat that you got uh, that's that was raised on uh, grass is a whole different aspect, and we don't need to get into that. Oh, we could get into that. Yeah, that's what I, 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 I when I was out in uh, uh, New Mexico when I had my little five acres out there, I uh, I went to my neighbor who had grain-fed beef. Mm -hmm. I'd buy a cow. Mm -hmm. Keep it full of my freezer. When I was in Miami. I went out into the Gulf Stream and caught a uh, dolphin. No, that ain't flipper, guys. That's uh, <laughs> that, that for you landlubbers. That's mahi mahi. Uh, for you, uh, you know, Texas fishermen, that's Dorado. And uh, it's uh, yeah, I'm I'm healthy. I'm 67 yeah. years old, and there ain't nothing wrong with me. Yeah. I still got my well, appendix. I still got my tonsils. Most people aren't in, into the uh, energetics as you are. They're behind the computer watching TV and uh, just as generally speaking, and then they're out trying to outdo everybody else in the competitiveness that money creates. Because the mentality that we have is money that we have to continually borrow more money so that we can pay the interest on the money, which I essentially is called usury. And then that, when that that mentality means that you can't ever get ahead, generally speaking, because the interest that you owe is never is never produced out there in the economy. So someone has to for, be foreclosed upon or become bankrupt uh, in, in, the, in the system that we're in. And that's because of, in, in, and I'll just say it's in my opinion, because we're eating a unwhole food diet, we're eating a part of the cow, part of the chicken, part of the grain, processed completely. If you read the back of the packages of all these chemicals and uh, ingredients that are in there, then we, we become unwhole, and we're always seeking something else behind the corner, around the, around the corner. We're seeking satisfaction with more money, more sex, more women, more computers, more uh, X, Y, Z, because we're not satisfied. The wholeness that the Indians got that you get from eating uh, the food from the land is a satisfaction that is not predominant in America and the world today. We're not satisfied with who we are as human beings. We don't know who we are as human beings as a general statement. We think we're, let's say my name, David Sneakett, or some uh, name out there, we all have masks. We're we're somebody's son and a daughter, and we're a, a clerk or a lawyer or X Y Z career. We think we're that, when in, when in fact we're a human being, all brothers and sisters on this planet. The Indians address their friends and enemies as brother. Hey brother, hey, come on, let's sit down with me. You know, <laughs> we don't do that. We're not a social. It doesn't seem like we're a social human being anymore. We're just integrated, independent. Robots will turn it into fucking robots, man. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> well, we are, but how do we how do we find this? We, you, you, just what we're doing, we, just educating people, being who we are, just setting the best example we can, doing the block talk radio, constantly talking to people, get back to the farm, uh, presenting a meal, doing your echo your village. Aspect uh, on the uh, on the on the blog, the Liberty Village, continue uh, promoting that. Send it out to a stranger once in a while. You know, every day is a new day. Every hour, every minute. Uh, I'm doing it all the time. And people don't listen to me. I don't care. See you. I offer. I offer them help. I I, I put a grid over because it, it shows people if they're interested or not. How would you like free health care and free home? They don't. They just think I'm a nut. Well, you know, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I studied food and I studied mortgages and money for seven, uh, well, the food for 30 years and the money for seven. And if they don't respond, they're, they're, they're just totally shut off. Their, their, their energy level is uh, blocked by the shell that they make that they created around them, uh, in my opinion, by eating eggs every day. They create that shell around them. And, they're not, and when they break through that, then they'll be open to living again. But right now, uh, a lot of Americans are uh, in a shell. They drive around in cars that have a shell. You know, they protect themselves 
from the from everything else. They don't want to hear anything right now. They're they're just in that uh, carousel or cycle that the uh, gerbil runs around in. <laughs> so, I, uh, what can you do? What? Uh, well, now, now you know live, the just live your life. the uh, thing uh, I'm I. You know, I got, they tried to kill me a few, uh, ten years ago. Yeah, okay. And, uh, I don't know whether it was because of Liberty Villages, I don't know whether it was because I blew the whistle on George Bush's drug smuggling operation, Operation oh, yeah. Watchtower, or if it was, uh, because I referred to 9-11 as an exaggerated case of Jewish lightning. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 uh, uh, wait, uh, Let's, let me ask, uh, help you maybe with this. And, and, uh, and I hated everything myself. I hated the, when I came back from Vietnam, fuck in the army, you're stuck, and I hated my parents, and I hated the school system, I hated the propaganda. I didn't so much hate the Jews, I don't know, I didn't even know enough to, to, to uh, hate them. <laughs> and then I find all this uh, energy, it's, it's creating more of it actually, you know, if you read it, a few of these uh, new, new, new age stuff. Uh, I, I, I started changing my diet, became more positive internally, and then my positiveness was just do what you can for nature or for human beings or the planet uh, uh, as, as an individual. And the best thing that I came up with was eating a plant-based diet. Now, now, I'm not expecting everybody to go towards a plant, but uh, what I would love is to go towards a plant-based diet. But the more plants you eat, the more you'll love, be loving and peaceful, and, and forget the hate and the uh, uh, admonishing all the problems out there. Those things, we, uh, and human beings created for their enjoyment, for some uh, psycho, you know, psychotic mist that they have, or uh, play, and they are totally playing us. And if we can see that they're playing us, we just can play right back. But we don't know the rules of the game. We don't know the money rules, and we don't know the food rules. Uh, uh, basically, aspect of there's two there's two definitions of rules, and that's those you know uh, the rules like commandments. But also there's the rules as the major factor in our life, and food rules us. We cannot deal, we cannot change our, our biological or psychological stuff unless we change the food we eat. So the, what's the best food to eat for our peacefulness? And for me, that's a plant-based diet. Because in the meat-eating aspect, you're, if you're eating a food that's violently killed by people who hate to be a butcher and hate to sell their shit because of, uh, you try to kill a cow, try to kill a chicken. I mean, it's pretty tough. They don't want to die. They want to live. So if you're eating this death-based mentality, that you're going to be signing mortgages because a mortgage is a death-based thing. You know, I'm trying to relate food and money here. And uh, the, the, the death-ness that we eat is uh, manifested through our actions. So we're going to go out. Uh, be a, I'm going to be uh, eating meat uh, in my parents' house for 20 years. I go out. I got to go fight for patriotism. I got to go fight in the army. I got to do like my dad did. I got to go be an army man. Well, everybody had that. Like in a certain lot of, lot of men, you know, in their 20s with their ego and their test testosterone, they want to go out and kill somebody, and they still do that today. We, uh, as, as a meat eating society. Uh, I don't know the percentage, I'm mean, going to guess 90 plus percent, uh, is it, very uh, aggressive and uh, uh, impulsive and uh, it acts just like they do <coughs> when they, with how we treat animals. There's a great book, Diet for a World, World Peace Diet by uh, Will Tunnel. The way we treat animals, and that's the, the farm way uh, that we put them in cages, we cut their beaks, and we cut their toes, and we cut their testicles, and we, we, uh, we poison them with chemicals and fertilizers, and et cetera. We, that's how they, we're treating each other, brothers and sisters on this planet. So the mentality of the food that we eat 
and, and I'm just going to blame me uh, in a certain sense, and not really blame it, but just show it as an example. The, the, the way we treat the animals that we eat on our table every day is the way we treat each other. And uh, uh, Monsanto is, is a good example. You know, the, the, the poison the chickens and the cows and the pigs that we eat uh, is it's manifested by Monsanto being the uh, uh, genetically engineered uh, grain that you can't uh, uh, re replicate on a, on a yearly basis. And, and, and farmers in India are killing themselves. One of the things that we went in Iran, uh, we, we, uh, Iraq for, uh, for settlement, was they could, the farmers could not buy, uh, could not use their own seed. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, They're trying uh, to do that right now in yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Again, you know, yeah. I just mentioned that. It, 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 it is uh, it is the consciousness of the people who eat a certain way. Uh, and that's and that's how simple I can say it. If you eat a certain way, there is a manifestation of how that's going to affect your life and others. How you think, what you read, uh, how you absorb the propaganda that's out there or reject it. How your uh, internal strength, you call these minerals that we don't have. They don't want you to have minerals. They don't want you to have hemp. They don't want you to have good quality sea salt or hemp or plant-based foods. They're, they're robbing the farmer, the, the the, the, the family farm of their ability to raise food, they don't want you to be strong and think because your immune system will fight off the propaganda and the bullshit that's out there uh, over time. You, you strengthen your physical human body, uh, the, that six footness or whatever, five footness, whatever, <laughs> the male or femaleness of a human being, you strengthen it, and that's the most powerful thing on the planet that we can do, and that's uh, from 30 years of studying macrobiotics, eating well on a day-to-day -day basis. If, uh, I think I sent you my Every Kitchen a Wellness Center understanding that the m more you get into the, 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 the if you want to use the clodials or the sea salt or a plant life or just start educating yourself on food, 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 uh, you'll see which aspect, how it changes your life. If you drink too much coffee, if you drink too much alcohol, if you do too many drugs, this is what's going to happen. If you eat sea salt and brown rice and grains and vegetables and beans, you're going to live your life this way. Which one do you want? And it's very simple to do, Clay. You go to people who are sick and say, hey, what did you eat? Oh, I don't want to eat that. I think I'll go for this healthy person. What did you eat? Oh, yeah, I like the way you, uh, you act and you look and you know, what, how you display your life. I'm going to follow that diet. Now, if we did that, <laughs> which we don't do, by the way, but you know, I don't look to my neighbor and say, hey, what are you, how are you eating? You know? But uh, we're so, uh, what's that word, against uh, 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 sentimental. We go to our friend, oh, you're so sick, oh, have some more drugs, have some more doctor pills, have some more surgery and radiation and chemotherapy, the doctor's going to cure you. We have this expert mentality that somebody knows better than we, I, individual with intuition and understanding and some creativity, no, we, we've been, that's been subverted. You know, that's been held in check. You know, you don't know how to do something. You can't, you can't take care of your health. You, uh, you can't take up your own law. You can't go to court on your own, you know. <laughs> you know, we're, we, no, we're not fighting this. We're just having to break through what I call the eggshell mentality. And, uh, it, it, it will just happen slowly, Clay. And maybe generations, you know. <laughs> well, I don't have generations, but I yeah. got another uh, 20 years here to do yeah. this and put it together. <laughs> and I want people to work with, but... In order to do that, I need to sell books. I need to uh, yeah, get yeah, some yeah. Uh, income here. I, uh, you know, I can live barely, but I got a computer that's broke now. I don't have the money to fix it. This uh, is the, this is what's frustrating to me. Everything that you're saying, I have told people and planned it for 20 years. Here's how you can do it. Here's how you can do it. And the the. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, first of all they've written it in the stone that they want to eliminate the population. Yeah. They want to go put it down, cut it down to a manageable 500 million. That means they want to kill a billion people, and 
the the other thing that they're doing is the energy thing. You got to buy this gasoline. We got to go to war to get this gasoline. We got to go to the war to get this oil, and we don't need it. I've got up on my Facebook site. I've got uh, a whole film about cars that run on water, about magnetic generators that will run forever and uh, produce more energy than uh, it takes to start them. Yeah. But yeah. you can't have it. It's oh, it's yeah. illegal. It's illegal to produce more food. It's illegal to yeah. cure cancer. It's illegal to to uh, do this. It's illegal to do that. And Ann Rand had it absolutely right. She said, Government has no control over honest citizens, so they got to make criminals out of us. Right. Now, that, that's perfect. And, you know, the, 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 we're criminals if we don't see the quote-unquote 9-11 uh, stuff. I mean, that is so obviously an explosion. It's, imp it's impossible for that plane to crash. We don't get there, but... Uh, we don't do anything about it. We're, we're just so sheeple, and myself included. What, you know, we are a feeling, well, there is a feeling of frustration. Okay, now, now, hold it right there. 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 I did something about it. I put building number seven on the cover of my nationally distributed oh, magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 19, I'm, I'm sorry, 2004. I said building number seven. Why did it fall? And I referred to it as Jewish lightning, and they tried to kill me about for that in May 20th of 2004. Yeah. So, yeah, so you know, and, and ever since then, I've been trying to recover everything I had. I had national distribution. I had plenty of money. I had trucks. I had uh, vehicles. I had everything. Mm -hmm. I had a home on the canal in Miami, and I lost it all. I lost it all because, oh, yeah, matter of fact, it's in this issue of the magazine. Yeah. I had one of my magazines sold for a half a million bucks. They put a press release out on Thursday. We, uh, we, or we signed the papers on Thursday. They put a press release out on Wall Street on Friday that did about Arizona Thunder Riders magazine. And Monday I walked into the CEO's office and he's white and shaking clay. I can't go through with it. They're threatening me. They're threatening to impeach me. They're my stock's dropping, dropping like a rock. I can't go through. They've sent, they've sent letters to every congressman to tell them what a right-wing radical anti-Semite you are. Now, as soon as they do that, you know it's coming from ADL or Southern Poverty Law. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, you know, that Ann Rand is making us criminals is so perfect of a statement uh, because we all have to have these licenses to do everything and everything else is illegal when in fact the stuff that we're that, that they're making illegal is legal <laughs> the, the natural miss of being a human being on this planet eating what's in our area the slow money movement etc is really the, the process that the money elites don't want you to have so they have to make us criminals so that we're criminals in uh, uh, in, in, uh, see, partners in crime. So everybody must believe that we're all partners in crime without believing we're partners in crime. <laughs> it's very well, paradoxical. I, I, uh, I have also made the statement here that uh, they, uh, they have refined the art of slavery to the point yeah. The slaves don't know they're slaves. Right. Yeah. And and uh, you just think if you were an artist like a Michelangelo or something, you refine your art over time or over your lifetime. And these people have to have generations to, to to redefine the art of slavery. And it is the art that uh, it, it's passed down from generation to generation on how to make money. And and. and and, and the numbers on your computer, the numbers in your bank account, is more important than people. I mean, uh, 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 and it's so ingrained, and myself included. You know, money was more important than my neighbor. And I had to charge money and all this stuff. Uh, and and uh, you've got to start books and stuff. And uh, if if we can have a new issued money, and that's where the public banking comes in. That's where uh, what I'm trying to do with this 
which is more that I've been getting around, is start understanding money in a different way. It can be issued by a community. Okay, the money is just accounting. Play. I'm sure you might be aware of that, but the accounting is really what it money is. So if you have a Liberty Village and you have 10 or 20 people who can live in a certain geographically small area or a larger area, then you can issue the money on consensus. We want to build a road. We want to have a farm. We want to have good water. We'll issue the money to do that. Well, yeah, that takes I, a I again, again uh, in the Liberty Villages uh, yeah. dot org, I've told you, and I've been telling you in the Free American for 20 years about Ithaca Hours. Mm -hmm. Ithaca Hours, they issue their own money. It's uh, Ithaca, New York. Yep. And now they're doing the same thing in Colorado. And they got mm -hmm. the hip to back their currency there. Yep. It's, uh, so yes, absolutely they can do it. Absolutely. And all they'd have to do is buy my magazine and read about that. Yep. All they yep. have to do is go to my website and... and <laughs> you got to get the audience, too. I mean, the people are... Uh, it's like... Uh, uh, we're, we could be, uh, quote, unquote, uh, masturbating here, you know, but it's, 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 we're, we're just doing the talk, and, and, I, and I know I love you for doing the blog talk radio, but the action needs to be there, because just like I read the books on farming, I got 20 books on farming, or you got 20 cookbooks, or, or 20 uh, books on uh, doing something on money, and if you don't really do the action that's necessary, we're, we're just we're pissing in the wind, you know, well, and... That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. You got to get off your ass, folks, yeah, yeah. and do something here. Yeah. Now I've got the whole plan. I mean, I know the people that can build the uh, generators. Okay. Uh, I we've got uh, we know it, it ain't no big hard thing putting solar or a windmill. You can make windmills that uh, sit right in your front yard and look decorative too. You know the, the right. spiral windmills. You can you can do you can but you can cut. 50 gallon barrels in half, uh, weld them to a wheel with a brake on it, and uh, put it on an axle, and cut them in half, and weld them there, and make a windmill, and take the generator off the old car that you took, and took the alternator off, and create power. All right. You got that on your website? Well, let's start doing that. <laughs> Be so happy people, want, you know, people want money so that they can spend it, so that they can go to the opera, so they can go to the movies, or they can buy the videos, or the prostitutes, or the, the, the food, that the luxuries food, go to restaurants, etc. And the luxury that money creates, nobody wants, it, it, in, in my generalization, Nobody really wants to quote unquote back to Alice's uh, farm or uh, what's that song? Nobody want to work on uh, Maggie's farm anymore because they think farming is too difficult. Well, farming is and, and self-sufficiency is the easiest thing. The Indian subject quote that you mentioned, you know, the the enjoyment of life is something that we have not uh, uh, experienced to the fullest because we would be there. If, uh, well, let's put it this way, Clay, a certain sense. We all been there. Now we want. Now we see this how luxury works, and then we got it. And then when we are uh, sick and tired of this luxury environment, then we'll go back to the basics again. <laughs> that's the best I can explain it there for sure. <laughs> but I, 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 well, I the, the, the whole thing, the, the whole plan for the Liberty Villages was, first of all, rest uh would, was I, I decided instead of using little boxes, little uh, tiny Texas houses, which turns out to be a con, the, uh, that we could uh, we could put teepees up. Now you lived in a teepee in Alaska. I did. You yeah, didn't, and, and and you didn't freeze to death. I, no, if, I didn't freeze to death. No. If you were driving down the road and you came up on a a, a place on the road that had a yurt sitting there surrounded by 10 teepees and had a for rent sign or uh, vacancy a vacancy sign out vacancy, there. Yeah. 
I think people would stop just to see. And then you can start telling people. You can educate them by selling the books and the videos and uh, mm -hmm. playing the, and, and uh, uh, pointing them in the right direction in the gift shop. Kind of like a kind of like a uh, Cracker Barrel, you know, setup, you know. Except uh, we we allow uh, Duck Dynasty products. <laughs> See, the problem is I I talk to my friends about this, and they say we don't want to go back to that lifestyle. We don't want to go back to living in a teepee or a yurt or Adobe homes. We want to live with our communication, our, our cell phones, our iPads, our computers. And our TV, and, and you know what? How can I judge that? You know, like even like the Pope said, how can I judge prostitutes or uh, 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 homosexuals, etc.? I can't judge. So we can't judge. All we can do Clay, is in our best. You know, you've got a computer, uh, a website that's you know powerful. You've got the Black Talk Radio. You know, like uh, Charles Einstein, uh, various people you have on there. That, by the way, some of the people that you have on, they, 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 the, the um, equipment that you're using or something, I, I can't hear it. it. It just breaks up all the time, and uh, uh, there's probably, I don't know if you, you, you interfered with or not, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I find it difficult to listen to your show sometimes. Well, uh, they, they certainly do go after my, uh, my computer. I've yeah. got uh, I've got one that just crashed here, mm -hmm. so I I I I I've got one backup here that I'm using, but it's uh it doesn't work and doesn't have all the programs that I need. What, what uh, kind of money do you need to fix up your to get to get back in uh, good shape? Uh, four or five hundred bucks. That's about. Yeah, I could send that to you tomorrow or today. Well, I'd appreciate that. All you got to do is go to my website and click on uh, click on. Uh, uh, donation button and it takes okay. you right to my PayPal site I get the money instantly okay. and uh, you know we've got the books for sale if you got an email list send out uh, people tell yeah. send people to shop.freeamerican.com I've got it to my email I send it to my email list the, uh, the people that they, the, the people are so busy clay you know uh, I mean I, I don't know how many people you have listening I see uh, a couple times I was there four or five people on a on the, on the listening, and, and they can they certainly can go to the archives. But we, it, it is very difficult to get people organized around a long term continuum like living. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, so you know what? I, 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 a tune keeps going through my hell, my my head. It, it keeps going through my head. How you gonna get them back on the farm after they've seen L.A. or how they after they've yeah. seen Gay Perry? How you gonna get them back on the farm? And well, how you gonna do that? You have to all the uh, all those catalogs that go out there showing the new dresses and new cars and new computers and new iPhones and the constant expansion that has to go on to keep this money system floating uh, is incredible and. Uh, and in, in hindsight or looking back, you know, how much can this planet handle without, uh, as the 68 minutes said, a big earthquake in Yellowstone is due and a big earthquake in, Ar I mean, a volcano in uh, Yellowstone and a volcano in Iceland. These things are, you know, possible, possible any second. I don't know, in the Bible they said, uh, beware of uh, uh, <coughs> something like that. Overnight things can happen. You know, the bail in... Uh, the, the bankers can take your, any of the money that you have on deposit immediately for a bail-in. You think a bailout's bad, you know, where, where, the, where the taxes are used to uh, bail out the banks. Well, a bail-in can happen just like in Cyprus, any moment. So to be prepared for that, okay, you have money in the bank, you use it, but you don't depend on it. You know, you're not going to jump off a building because your money's gone in the bank. And, and I would recommend to any of your friends out there. The, the money in the bank has to be play money. It, it, it just has to be a, for uh, a, a diversion of your money or uh, having money here and money there. But the, the, uh, the ultimate uh, creati creative, skilled human being in Wall Street was mentioned years ago. If you've got a trade, a carpentry, a plumbing, a, a cooking, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, building something, uh, you're going to be valuable. So. People who are working will continue to work. People who are 
dependent on all the other stuff for uh, their, their pleasure and enjoyment and taking advantage of, they'll see their time uh, in suffering. So uh, I don't know, everything works out for the best. <laughs> uh, keep, keep, the thing, keep the thing going. Well, I've been keeping it going for 20 years. Yeah, you can still. And I can't stop. I mean, I tell people that I can't stop. I can't, you can't retire. Tell. You know, it's what what they call a. Uh, you have a uh, skill that you have a, uh, uh, a muscle for this. You know, I have a muscle for cooking, and they you know some people have a muscle for playing a piano, and uh, a muscle for building their websites, and. Uh, uh, you're, you're doing great out there, you know, with, uh, it's, it's just going to be a, another 20 years, another 50 years, another 100 years before you get turned around. And the ideal aspect is to know you are whole and complete in and of yourself, and what you do, quote unquote, whether it's right or wrong, you're just doing it. Yeah, there's one of the problems that we got here is that uh, people... Uh, we find reasons to not work with other people. We find reasons, and and this is the yeah, oldest, yeah, 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 right, right. The oldest strategy exactly. in warfare. Sun Tzu told you that uh, the the tactics are divide and conquer, and that's what. Yeah. Oh, you're a fa you're a communist. Yeah. Well, I'm a fascist. Yeah, that's, that's, you're a Republican. That's, that's, well, I'm a Democrat. You're a liberal. Well, I'm yeah. a conservative. Bullshit! You're Americans. You're people. You're people. You don't need to find what? reasons to divide yourself. You need to find reasons to work together. Yeah, right, and that's that. Divide and conquer is our food. The food that we eat is divided, broken down, and processed so that our mentality is divide and conquer. We live in separate homes. We all have separate kitchens. We don't talk to our neighbors. I moved into Margaret. She does not know one of her neighbors by, by name. I was guilty of that in Miami. I was writing my books. I was uh, going out and fishing and gathering my food on the ocean. I didn't know any of my neighbors. I didn't know them. And, and what I've said about the whole Liberty Village concept, if you take one block, your block, where you live, it doesn't matter whether you're in Dallas or Minnesota yeah. or wherever, you get with your neighbors and you say, look, we're going to do a little experiment on this block. Mm -hmm. You can either join us or leave us alone. It doesn't matter right. to us. It doesn't matter to us. We're going to grow food in the backyard. We're going to put solar on the roof. We're going to put a windmill. We're going to tell the neighborhood association to kiss our ass. <laughs> and, and we're going to cut our power bills and a half. Yep. We're going to give you all the technology. We'll have a meeting on Saturday to uh, get food from the local farms. Now, Oklahoma's got a nice little program there. It's a food co-op. You join the food co-op. You go in on Sunday or Saturday to the courthouse and meet your local farmers that are growing yep. organic food, not genetically modified crap that rats won't eat. <laughs> and well, the, the, all the paperwork's done. All the paperwork's yeah. done. It's there. They're, they're doing it. It's working in Oklahoma. It can work in Texas. It can work in California. It can work in uh, Pennsylvania. It can work anywhere if you work together. Talk yeah. to your neighbors. You can do a nice yeah. little flyer and go and, and not even talk to your neighbor. Go stick it on their mailbox. Stick it on their door. We're going to have a neighborhood meeting. It's neighborhood watch. It's a neighborhood watch meeting. Yeah. Now, now, here's the problem with that in a certain sense, because I have that problem. I'm not willing to live here for the rest of my life, so I don't feel community uh, here where I am in Massachusetts. So I can't do this or I won't do this. And that's what I got back to what we were talking about an hour ago. If you don't believe you're going to be in a, in a place, who would want to live in a in a deteriorating community or a community where you don't talk to your neighbors, but you're just paying the taxes and your mortgage and you have this job and you have this family, you have a few friends. So that the, the uh, like again, the, the egg mentality, you're stuck inside this egg mentality and you can't do this until you break through and get the balls or the guts as opposed to, to 
to contact your neighbors and start this uh, air area community where you're going to grill your own food and your wind. But I bet most of the people that would listen to your show or listen to you are in, a, in such an area where there is no land, or you can put it on top of the roof and stuff like that. But there, America is still a transit, transition type people. We want to move around. We want to have our cars and we want our planes and we go on vacations and we visit our relatives. We don't have friends in the neighborhood. We can't stand our neighbors, just like we can't stand our villages. Yeah. Because we don't know how to react. On, to on, on the chat room, on the chat room, they're going. Uh, well, your neighbor could be a spy these days. People are paranoid yeah, as hell. Yeah. No one trusts. I I don't have uh, neighbors near me. Uh, your neighbor could be anyone, anywhere. We don't need neighbors with spy madness in the air. You know. So well, again, you're finding reasons not to work together. This is why. This is why they are winning. This is why they've got the control over us because right. we won't work together. We always right. got to. You got a reason that we're not working together, and yeah, I respect the reason. I, I did the same thing. I mean, in Miami, I I talked to people. I had thousands of readers, and and uh, in in New Mexico, I had thousands of readers, but uh, there was nobody that worked with me, together with me, where we could do this. Right. That's why you have it in, in, the, in the Northeast here, you have these really three incidents. You have the Boston uh, Massacre, not Boston Massacre, Boston Maritime Massacre. You got the Newton, uh, Newtown, uh, Connecticut uh, uh, Children's Day. All this fear that's based on, it's all these false flag operations. And you got the Twin Towers in New York City. Well, then most of the people here live in, in, in the East Coast, I think. I'm, a lot of California, too, is a bigger place. But a lot of people here, lives are based on fear. And it is the fear that has to continue because nations create fear to control people. That's their job. That's what they do. That's why nations have been formed, quote, unquote, to protect the people. But they're not protecting us anymore, so everything changes. So when nations were formed, whether they were formed 100 years ago or 3,000 years ago, uh, the old nations of Iran and Iraq and Afghanistan, but the new nations of the United States 300 years, they were formed by a group of people, we the people, to protect the people. Well, it's not working anymore because they're not protecting us. But people have a sense of security in their homes today. They're, they're not going to disrupt the car. They're not going to... Uh, yeah, that's a negative statement yet. Yeah. Uh, if I went around and put mailboxes in, in uh, everybody's home, let's do a village garden and... Uh, geez, maybe I just ought to do it. Village garden and a uh, and solar roof, you know. Uh, the, the, these people are transient. They don't, they're not going to stay here. They're not going to invest that... I'm, I'm putting negatives out there. Sorry, but... Uh, well, okay, uh, now wait a minute. I, I, I got, a, I got a solar, uh, I got a solar uh, generator. Uh, I got a solar we, generator. We put the negativity in ourselves. Yes. Just did then. You sure? And I've got a solar generator. It's called a juice box. I've got it up on my website. I've got it in my magazines. And uh, I'm just telling people about it. Not because if you tell the guys that the Free American sent you, you can get a discount. But. Uh, it's it, 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 yeah, I could put it on the back of my Harley mm -hmm. and take it anywhere and power my computers, power my modem, power my cell phone, use Skype, and do my show from anywhere in the country. Oh, good, yeah. But, uh, but again, that's $500. It's $500 I don't have. Or I'd be doing all of these if I had the backing that I need to fix a computer, to buy this generator. I'd be selling the generators at every motorcycle rally around the country. I would pay right, for a I'll booth. I'll send you the 500. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I'll send you the 500 in an hour. In, in, in an hour. <laughs> All right. But th this, and, and you know, I, I mean, I, I, ha I was all set up to do this. That's why I bought this fifth wheel. I got a fifth wheel that's paid for, but they blew my truck up. Yeah. Uh, evidently an EMP because I, I can think of no other reason that a glow plug harness would uh, 
catch fire and deteriorate uh, while you're driving. Go plugs only work when you're starting the damn thing. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. they 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 wiped out my truck. Mm -hmm. Or I'd be I'd, I'd have a place to live everywhere uh, and, and do this whole uh, thing. And the motorcycle fits in the back. There you go. You know, you, you got to be flexible. You got to be mobile today. You know, you know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, uh, uh, weather-wise, economy-wise, uh, nation-wide, uh, 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 police state, etc. It's uh, it, it, it's all uh, for our learning to be standing on our own. We have to have our own standing as interdependent individuals, not dependent. On the government or your spouse or the, or the shelter that you're in currently or even the food system that you have you have to have this flexibility like a cat you know a cat can jump off or be thrown off a roof and land at four or four feet and, and we don't have that we have that you know i, I believe I, I mean, uh, and in, in the individuals that live on everything is uh, Edgy. You have to have Vietnam. You know, the soul had to have that. I had to have that on the radio. And I had to have what's going on in moment to moment. You had to be aware of everything that's going on. And that's a very energy. That, that takes a lot of energy. And we don't have, and myself included on both sides, we're, uh, totally aware of what, whatever going on and in, in, in trying to uh, uh, make my best next move, uh, the double edged sword type of mentality, uh, is not. In, not, not ingrained in us. That's why one of those three things that you were talking about to go after the veterans because they they have that 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 edginess that, that can erupt any time. You know, I can be very peaceful and very angry all at once. You know, or almost in, within minutes. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, and and it, you you dumb that down with processed food, propaganda, drugs, medications, um, and chemotherapy uh, experts. Uh, uh, every day, uh, sugar, white flour, alcohol, you know, the poison that we're poisoning us is just a small uh, uh, area in our life that, that has to, that, that's going to change into the future where we will be uh, strong individuals that love life uh, and, and, and work with our neighbors and create various goods and services that we all can enjoy uh, without depleting the resources of the planet. Mm -hmm. So I, I have I have my optimism for humanity. There is I have a sort of pessimism here and there, but I like I like to try to keep up the optimism. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you you've offered to send some money today. That'll help. Maybe I can get the uh, computer fixed. And, and, and but uh, if if you've got some people that you can put together, maybe I maybe I don't work well with others. You know, I don't play <laughs> well with others. You know, I am kind of hard boiled about it. And uh, you know, if you don't like what I who I am or what I do, you know, just yeah. keep going. Just keep moving away. Walk away from me. I don't start any fights, but I'll yeah. finish one every time. All right, great. Yeah, but yeah, if I, if I, you put I, together I remember, yeah. if you put together a few people. We can demonstrate this. I mean, I've got all of the resources. I've got all of the connections. I've got all of the things. All I need is the money for gas, a transportation. I need a truck to pull this thing. We could go anywhere. We could get this generator working over here. We could get the solar generator and sell it at all of the biker events mm -hmm. because it'll fit on the back of a Harley. And, yeah, it'll, right. and it'll generate enough power to power your computers to power your lights. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also got things up there that uh, we've got sales on. That, and, you uh, know, you got three months to plan now. You know, I don't, I don't know how cold it is over there. Colder or, hell. Or, where the, where, or where the bikers are. But, uh, you know, put together a plan during the spring now, uh, I mean the winter, rather, so that you can spring out of, spring in action in February, March, April, whenever you feel comfortable. But uh, I've got the plan. Know, I've, I've, I've got places. I've got shops in Daytona Beach where, during Bike Week where, okay. where, we can, uh, where we can set up uh, uh, a shop, set up a table. Uh, yeah, I can do I this. Can't, I, I can't help you set up those things, but I can, I can help you financially that right now. That's I, can I can do, do I, I can, all, the, the whole plan is already set up. It's all there. Okay. 
Everything's there. I've got the we got I got the phone numbers. I've had the guy on my show that's got the juice boxes. Mm -hmm. He's got them for sale. We can make we can make money off of ju every juice box that we sell for him. We can right. demonstrate it. We can demonstrate it. So I'm not looking I'm not looking for charity here. I'm looking to make money by promoting the right things. Carry uh, you know play, well, this this trailer. This is the greatest invention we have. This trailer will carry you so much. I mean, all of the books that I've written. So we can uh, we can set up shop and sell my books right here. All I gotta do is pay for it's on their own demand. They're printed on demand. So I've got hard copy books for yep. forty bucks. I've got I've got PDFs. All I, that I and all you gotta do to sell those is hand somebody a business card. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, go for it. You know, uh, the uh, the best thing to do is the action and. and if you can do the blog talk radio wherever, you, you know, you, you just just go where the uh, quote unquote uh, the feeling is right. Well, you start using your intuition and going north, south, east, or west, uh, depending on uh, about the, the uh, energy that's within you, whether you're feeling cold or hot. You know, just go. Uh, we go to uh, Daytona Beach in March. We we start mm -hmm. this in Daytona Beach in March. We can go to uh, the. Austin uh, Republic of Texas rally. We okay. can go. We can uh, in uh, in the summertime. We can go up to uh, 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 Laconia. Okay. And, and in October, we can do Sturgis. And where's, where's, the every, summer, where, where's Laconia in the summer? New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire, yeah. Fine. Well, you know, you come up from Connecticut, we'll pick now, up for a while. Now, think about this. We're doing the show. We're doing the show. I'm doing the show right now. I'm doing it up on YouTube. I'm filming it on YouTube. But I could do this show with a juice box generator. Mm -hmm. And that's juice box in the chat room, not juice box. It's a juice <laughs> box made in America, made in America okay. with a folding solar panels. You just unfold it, set it on mm -hmm. top of your tent. And, okay. and and I, I don't even need a tent. I'm telling you, I'm not, you don't need a tent. You can put the, one of these little shelters that will fold up. And uh, you, the, the, they use them on the beach. Okay. And yeah. you set that up in front of the uh, my friend's shop in Daytona Beach and do the show. This show, because they can see you, they can hear you right here. We got it set up. We got the other computers were so they can see you they can see my guest and they can hear the show and I guarantee you I'll sell out of books I'll sell out of uh, we'll, and, and we'll, everybody that comes in and listens to the show 15 minutes 20 minutes and they, they will gather a crowd I will gather a crowd around me <laughs> All right. I, I share your enthusiasm <laughs> And, and you know they, uh, the the only thing that stopped me is they kill my finance. I had one magazine, one magazine, America, uh, uh, Thunder Riders, Arizona Thunder. It was sold for half a million bucks. Mm -hmm. So what I do is productive. What I do works. Great, great. And the only reason it doesn't work, whoa, you know, I started the militias. You're damn right I did. Wasn't a terrorist organization. I did it in the governor's office, and the governor ran for president last year. Right, right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, you, you, you have some great, uh, 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 spear the core, as they say. <laughs> well, with me, I've told people it's real, real easy. Yeah, I, I took it. I took an oath when I was 17 years old to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign mm -hmm. and domestic. And it's not even the Constitution. The Constitution don't matter to us. The what matters to us is the Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. I support the Bill of Rights. That allows you the First Amendment allows you to worship any way you want. So if you want to bang your head against that wall, knock yourself out. I'll watch. <laughs> You want to stick exactly. your nose in the dirt and your ass up in the air? I'll try to keep the Saint Bernard off of you. Yeah. You know you want to be, and, and oh, you're a Christian. You wanna, you wanna pray to God for a Cadillac? 
I'll put it in the good word with God so maybe you won't drop it on top of your fat ass. <laughs> Well, that's crazy. And uh, you know, keep in mind, man, I'm a, I'm an old biker. I'm an old biker here. Yeah, man. It's, I it's uh, and, and I don't, uh, you know, I I just tell it like it is, man. I mean, I don't. Uh, again, I don't take any crap off of nobody. So uh, you're the type of people we need out there, day in day out, to uh, to inspire the rest of us to continue on. Yeah, yeah matter of fact. <laughs> I, I I I like that. Somebody I just saw something. I put something up on my uh, Facebook site, and I know people out there don't like Facebook. Well, it's a it's a it's yeah. They tap all your phones. Every phone I use is tapped, so I don't care. I yeah, don't right. care. Well, I, I, I work for NSA. You know, I told you that before. Yeah. And uh, uh, in the, in Vietnam, I worked for ASA, and then I came back and worked at Fort Meade, Maryland, and and then in Vietnam. We were spying on everybody that did anything, anywhere, anyhow, uh, as friendly and enemy. <laughs> that was in Vietnam, and they were so sophisticated then. And uh, a couple of my friends in the book that the, you know, with NSA, uh, the ASA, they had that thermite at that time. We would wreck, uh, you know, size of our of our bunkers to nothing. There would be nothing left in the bunker. It would just be blown up. The guys just clicked a little. Uh, Thing that they had, and that was uh, in the late uh, early 60, late seven, late sixties, early seventies. And now I know they had the nano thermite, and they could take down the nine eleven building so easy. It's it's incredible because because of what they did in Vietnam. I mean, it's just personal, not, well, yeah. not quite personal That's now, right. but now it's from a you know. And with, and uh, in during Vietnam, I was publishing one of those underground magazines, yeah. fighting the war. And, and opposing the war, and we stopped the war. Smoking pot and listening to Steppenwolf, we stopped the war. Yeah. I sold peace symbols to Kmart's. I sold them to Spencer's Gifts. I sold them to every head shop around the country. Peace oh, symbol, yeah, peace yeah, on yeah, earth. Yeah, I remember that. And yeah, uh, I you, I so I've been I've been in this war for a long time. Yeah. And now I, I'd like to uh, this uh, I, I want to play something just just about ten minutes. Can you uh, okay. can you listen to this? This is about the Bush now. What got me started in this, one of the things, after the whole war thing was over, and, uh, you know, I never spit on a veteran, and if anybody, I saw anybody mistreat a veteran, I took them out as an old biker. Mm -hmm. You don't want to spit on one of my brothers. But uh, uh, this, uh, this is a comedian that really had a good take on things, and uh, Pat Shannon sent me this the other day, so I put it up on my website. Oh, you know Pat? Yes. Oh, yeah. I know Pat. I pushed his books and uh, still uh, I'll have him back on. We've been friends he, for years. He's head of the uh, uh, Smedley Brigade here, here with Veterans for Peace. Great, great. Well, he sent me this. Let me share it with you and my audience okay. while, I, while I heat up my coffee. I don't hear him getting that military industrial complex boat happening. Hang on, it's coming. Sold 160 yeah. fighter jets, yeah, 240 yeah. tanks to Kuwait, and then goes around making speeches why he should be commander. Are we talking about the same Pat Scanlon? We still live in a dangerous world. What's that? Are we talking about the Pat Scanlon that's here in Massachusetts? Yes. Oh, okay. He wrote. He worked for. Uh, American Free Press for a little while, but this is Bill Hex on War and Freedom, and this is up, if you can't hear this, uh, uh, let me see here, let me see here, uh, can you uh, hear this on the, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Facebook is just a data collection tool, I don't care, every phone I use is tapped and I don't care. But hopefully uh, that you can hear this. I mean, it's playing on the speakers. Uh, they can hear you. Okay. So they ought to be able to, you ought to, be able to hear this. Let me uh, play this. War is a racket. Oh, yeah, that Smedley guy, yeah. Uh, thanks to you, you bunker. <laughs> what are you doing? Last week, Kuwaiti said nothing but rock. We're not hearing it, Clay. Okay. All right. Uh, Dave, 
would you yep. go? Could you go to my uh, Facebook site and play okay. this? Or, or YouTube? Well, let me give. Let I me do give, not go to Facebook. Okay, let me give you a YouTube site. Let I me give you. Then. Let me give you a YouTube site. Because this is uh, this is pretty good. This is pretty good here. Yeah, and then there's another one out there. Uh, that, that all wars are bankers' wars. Yeah, I've had that up too. That is an angle. Let me uh, let me get this over uh, to Dave. I don't know why I can't get it on here, but uh, let me uh, send that over to him. This is the YouTube with. David Hicks. He was a comedian, got a little bit of a foul mouth, but uh, we're on uh, Wolf Spirit Radio, and they don't give a fuck, and neither do I. So, uh, it's, uh, if I lose, all right. No, I'm not computer savvy here. So. That's all right. We're, uh, We'll get this up, and uh, he'll play this. It's uh, <laughs> he's got a, a few other uh, things on here. This is uh, Bill Hicks on War and Freedom. He's got another one here I haven't listened to yet. How many morons here think marijuana should be illegal? <laughs> <laughs> He's got another one called Puppet Bill Hicks. I mean, this this guy was really good, and he's dead now. I mean, uh, somebody, yeah. some, uh, a young man, and he died off of this, off of putting this information out, talking about Bush. You know, of course, they tried yeah. to kill me. Yeah, I'm just, very powerful forces. I'm just, uh, I'm just hard to kill. That's all. <laughs> that's right. We all are, actually. It's uh. You know, and, and what I like, this at least this guy is funny. He makes fun of these people. He makes fun of Bush, mm -hmm. you know. And, and it's we're in a battle. It's an eternal battle, Yeah, David. It's, it's an eternal battle, man. It has never been easy. You can't give me a time in history when it was easy to be free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, think of something you got to quote-unquote fight for. I mean, you know actually earn or gain, uh, gain. I think you have to lose freedom to know freedom. <clears throat> and, and then there's a really paradoxical quote, you know, you can have freedom in slavery and slavery in freedom. And uh, once you understand that paradox, uh, you, you, you can live in the cycle of life that's uh, really, really comfortable. You able to find that, Dave? No, I didn't, uh, oh, what am I looking for now? No, it's uh, Dave uh, Dave on Wolf Spirit Switchboard. He was oh. looking for this uh, Bill Hicks thing I sent him over on YouTube. H-I-C-K-S? Hmm? H-I-C-K-S Hicks? Yes, H-I-C-K-S. Uh, I have it downloaded and converted. Hang on a minute, I'll play it. Okay. Okay. And folks, go to shop.freeamerican.com. Go to freeamerican.com, make a donation. David's going to send money. Yeah, I need you to send some money. We can do this, folks. I'm, I'm willing to work. I work for nothing. I work for a commission. That's what I've always done. I'm ready I'm to play it. Commission. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. I'll warm my coffee up. Sold 160 fighter jets to Korea, then 240 tanks to Kuwait, and then goes around making speeches why he should be commander in chief because we still live in a dangerous world. <laughs> Thanks to you, you fucker. What are you doing? Last week, Kuwaitis had nothing but rocks. Been around in the fucking world, man. You know he armed Iraq. I, I wondered about that, too. You know, during the Persian Gulf War, those intelligence reports would come out. Iraq, incredible weapons. Incredible weapons. How do you know that? Oh, well. Uh, 
We looked at the receipt. <laughs> but as soon as that check clears, we're going in. What time is the bank open? Hey, we're going in at nine. See, you know, you know what bugged me about the whole election? was that uh, they made it, you know, they, they totally reduced us to this worship of money, and that's what they made the whole election about, was taxes, you know, voting with your wallet, you know what I mean? People would say to me, Bill, you vote for Clinton, he's going to raise your taxes. Okay? I mean, he'll tell you he's not, but he's going <laughs> to. A vote for Clinton is a vote for higher taxes, Bill. Sad news for you, folks. There's other reasons not to vote for George Bush than taxes, okay? I don't know what's happened to us as a world. Maybe 12 years of republicanism has made us think this way. But the reason I didn't vote for George Bush is because George Bush, along with Ronald Reagan, presided over an administration whose policies towards South America included genocide. <laughs> so, yeah, you see, the reason I didn't vote for him is because he's a mass murderer. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll pay that extra nickel on, on, you know, liter of petrol, just knowing little brown kids aren't being clubbed to death like baby seals in Honduras, so Pepsi can put a plant down there. I'll pay the extra nickel. That's what bugged me about Bush, man. This this whole thing about him being a foreign policy expert. You know what I mean? Well, well, you know, when it comes to foreign policy, George Bush is the man I trust. He's got the, you know, experience and the. Look at the coalition against Iraq. Incredible, incredible. That huge coalition, that giant coalition that included <laughs> England. <laughs> must have been hard. The two predominantly white nations going blowing the shit out of this little brown nation. What a hard sell that must have been for John Major, huh? John, George Bush, how are you? Good. We have a disgruntled mass that's getting really bored here. How about a little fireworks? <laughs> well, let's go through the roller deck. No, no, you think it's got him. Oh, here's one. No, let's go. Let's go kill some sand niggers. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. We'll be there. Right, right. We'll be there. Brilliant. If you often ask me where I stand politically, it's not that I disagree with Bush's economic policy or his foreign policy. It's that I believe he was a child of Satan here to destroy the planet Earth. <laughs> a little, little left. And it's where politics does make strange bedfellows, man. You know, when the dust settles to see what side you're on. It's really odd, you know what I mean? I was reading in the paper on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday after the elections over, and there's a quote from Saddam Hussein going, we have nothing against America. We just want to see George Bush beheaded and his head kicked down the road like a sucker ball. I'm thinking, that's what I want to see. <laughs> no, me and Hussein, we're like this, man. Damn. The point I'm making is about uh, the idea of freedom of expression, and I and I believe that, uh, that there's this agenda in mainstream media, and I think it's fairly easy to back this up, to keep people stupid, docile, and apathetic, and therefore the elite who own these corporations and the families that own the corporations, even fewer people, their agenda is to keep us stupid and apathetic. That's why I love public access, and again, thanks for having me on. We are figuring it out. Go back to bed, America. Your government has figured out how it all transpired. Go back to bed, America. Your government is in control again. Here, here's American gladiators. Watch this. Shut up. Go back to bed, America. Here's American gladiators. Here, 56 channels of it. Watch these pituitary retards bang their fucking skulls together and congratulate you on living in the land of freedom. Here you go, America. You are free to do as we tell you. You are free to do as we tell you. Do that clean. You see me in Dobby Clean? There's no fucking hope in a gun. So I'll just tell you. I'll show you politics in America. Here it is, right here. I think the pumping on the right scares my belief. I think the pumping on the left is more to my liking. Hey, wait a minute, there's one guy holding up both puppets. Get up. Go back to bed, America. Your government is in control. 
You're as well connected. Watch this and get fat and stupid. By the way, keep drinking beer, you fucking morons. Occasionally, there are some members of the audience who don't find it funny, and therefore they pay money, therefore they get upset. You know, what am I supposed to do when half the people are going, that was great, and the other half are going, you're evil. Is it my job to go into their lives and try and, and, try and please them? I actually had a woman say, why can't you do things, do things that appeal to everyone? That's impossible. <laughs> what a burden. No one's done that yet. <laughs> that will be a challenge. I will please all people. <laughs> and I also got, uh, you know, someone made a comment at the club going, we don't come to comedy to think. Gee, where do you go to think? I'll meet you there. We don't have, we don't have to do this here. Isn't there a halfway between? But, 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 but my way is halfway between. I mean, this is a nightclub, and, uh, you know, these are results. And what do you expect? What you're going to see on TV? No. This isn't TV live. And also, it's my show. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Change my, my, my own uh, outlook and my, my beliefs to, to be what? I try to talk to the audience the same way I talk to my friends. To take away the artifice of show business and actually have a feeling of a conversation going on. If some of the audience gets offended, then they're saying to me, I don't want to be your friend. Anymore. And that's fine. But what's your background? Where do you come from? I come from a southern Baptist household. Does that right. make sense? Your mom and they don't think it at all. They don't? No. Would you, let you, would you mind them going to theater? Not at all. No, I, they come to see me all the time. But they, they still, they don't get it. You know. My dad, do you have to use the F word in your act? Bob Hope doesn't need to use the F word in his act. Yeah, well, Dad, Bob Hope doesn't play the dives I play. Yeah, right. See, this is about you and what they want. They want me to what you want. Yeah. I, I, you know why? Because I honestly believe that we're all the same. And I think to, to, to go, well, I'll give them what they want is very condescending. And I don't try to condescend to people, you know? And uh, that's why I treat them like my friends. And, uh, and I guess that's a shocking way to behave in this world for some people. Uh, I for some people, but I don't sit there and go, well, you are all a bunch of idiots, so I will do things I don't believe in to amuse you. But they want to be entertained. Well, I mean, they want to walk. Well, thinking not they become entertaining. They don't want to think. You know, they don't want to think. Well, no, they want to talk. Am I supposed to go out and tickle them individually? We have to express an idea here. Well, this is why we want to put something on TV. There's not a question piece. Where one draws the line. What, what, what is there are no lines. Well, what, there are no lines. I say, erase all the lines. Yes, but that's what our program is all about. Well, it's all very well to say that, but it's not the, uh, you know, it's very good to say all the lines. All right, Dave. You can cut that off. You can cut, you can cut that off there. We can do to change the world right now. I, uh, I, I, I like that. I agree with him. You know, I, I, I. Yeah, yeah. Now, what do we finish this? Okay. 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 You're alive. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I like Bill Hicks. I like what he got to say. I like the way he looks at things. And, you know, I feel a lot the same way. You know, you don't, you don't like me, but that's okay. You don't have to sleep with me. You know? <laughs> but I'm telling you the truth. And I've been publishing and writing and broadcasting for well over 50 years. And I've never been sued for libel or slander. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I tell you the truth. And yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't like my language? No, no, no. I said, if you don't like my language, fuck you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you got to hear all the sides. And the, and the truth is, is what, well, is your belief system and, 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 has, and as how I understand it. So... If, if you're uh, giving, uh, if, <clears throat> if you're talking to a person who has a belief system that is totally 100% against you, or 50% of however you look at it, then they can't hear you. And uh, until they know what truth is, and the truth to me is, has, quote unquote, has to be, not to generalization, has to be what you believe. 
So if you're hearing the truth, it resonates with you. It makes up a vibrational aspect. It, 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 that feels right, you know, or uh, that feels wrong. And that's what I believe the truth is, how, how I interpret what you're saying, what the propaganda on the TV is saying, or with the newspaper, or some book I read. I have to know it internally as the truth, and then I uh, only what I, what I call verify what I already know. And uh, that's a nice way to, to go in the world. Like 30 years ago, like books would fall out of the shelf when I go to the bookstore. I'd read that book for, because it fell in front of me. I said, I know this. I've got to read this, you know. <laughs> and uh, when, I, when I understood the, what I read or heard or uh, it, 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 it was in conversation with somebody and it resonated, then I know it's the truth. So I, I, I don't think you can... Ex, you can uh, convince anybody of the truth or force the truth on anybody, they have to know it through themselves, through their own experiential belief system, through their own intuition, through their own vibratory capacity, through their own immune system, through every cell in their body has to believe it. You know, you know right. David, I have told people for 25 years at least <laughs> that uh, don't believe anything I tell you. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Don't believe yeah. anything I tell you. Go check it out for yourself. Yeah. Just listen. Just, yeah, just listen. listen. You know, I, I mean, I've, I've had to kind of stress that to uh, sister-in-laws <laughs> and uh, women that I've got. You know, you know yeah. what a conversation is? That's when you talk and I listen, then I talk and you listen. Right. <laughs> that, that's it. That, that's called social intercourse. Here's a funny one that people got upset about it. I was here in, uh, uh, in the last couple of weeks. The restaurant wanted me to uh, cook for them, and so I said, "Well, let's let's name it uh, Chat and Chew." Oh, that's a pretty c uh, clever name. Uh, I said, "But geez, I'm here in Newton, Massachusetts. You know where Harvard is and uh, MIT and uh, all these sophisticated people. I, I can't call it Chat and Chew. W why not, Dave? Well, people are too too uh, 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 intelligent around here. I'll have to call it." Social intercourse and mastication. <laughs> <laughs> Let that settle in for a little while. You know, and I told it to a, 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 a girlfriend of mine, and she was upset because I think she thought, she thought I said sexual intercourse and masturbation. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you have to listen very carefully to people's words or the words in any contract if you're uh, having. And, and these are all experiments in life that we are really going through. There is nothing on this planet that's probably not been experimented or, quote-unquote, as they say in the old book, uh, there's nothing new in the world. Uh, and I, I kind of have a, a belief of that. Uh, and, and, we, and, and going forward in life uh, is, is a beautiful experience. Uh, you're going to suffer. You're going to have be, uh, beautiful times. You'll have ups and downs in life. And you can control some of that uh, by what you take in, because that's about the only thing you can control. You can't control the weather, you can't control the politician, you can't control your neighbor shitting or pissing or uh, making something beautiful. The real only aspect that you can really control is what you put in your mouth. Knives over forks, all these uh, uh, the movies and things that are out there and the books can, can lead you to an, uh, a, uh, a beautiful challenge and a beautiful experience what you're eating you are what you eat and I, I, I believe that for 100 uh, percent it's not a good statement it sounds good sounds uh, uh, yeah of course you, you know you are what you eat everything that you've eaten the, the, from what your parents fed you from what your propaganda tv and newspapers everything is uh, vibrationally food for you food for thought food, physical, for your nourishment, whether you're eating crap food or biologically degenerative food, you're, uh, you're that individual. You know, mm -hmm. you've just touched on my favorite, one of my favorite definitions. You know, they've done experiments, uh, and yeah. uh, my friend uh, David Koch can tell you about uh, changing the uh, vibration of your water. You know, mm -hmm. they've done experiments on water. You can write, I love you on uh, one bottle of water, yes. and I hate you on the other one. 
Yeah. Talk bad to the uh, to the uh, bottle of water that says I hate you, and talk nice to the other bottle. And the freeze it, and the water crystals turn out beautiful. The hate you water crystals turn out jumbled. Yeah. And what yeah, the, the, the definition yeah, of love? There, yeah. The yeah. definition of love is your level of vibrational energy, and mm -hmm. I think. The more you love, the more you care about your fellow man, the closer to the deity that you get. And by the way, God don't look nothing like Charlton Heston, you know. <laughs> you know, the, the love between a man and a woman is called sex, you know, you know uh, so as, as one definition. And the love between the animal world and the plant world is called eating. Right? So what you're eating really has to come from the love that the plant world already manifested, or God or nature has manifested for you, what the Indians ate, or what uh, anybody that living on the land ate, was the love that was there, the, the buffalo or the, the hemp or the corn, all was from the great spirit, all was from the goodness of the nature that provided, and we, and we have... Yeah, I, and, and, and I don't know if I should say. And we have, as, as a humanity, slid away from that towards a illusionary money aspect or religion that that makes us our mindset a little bit crazy. Because if because if we lived in that world where the food is uh, making the, the love for us by eating, and we are just a, a ghost of what the food we've ate. Then we, then we can enjoy the simplicity of gardening, of cooking, and of eating, and of enjoying good quality sex at night, or good sleeping, or maybe a movie once in a while. Yep. But uh, to enjoy the mundane play is the issue that we're up uh, up against. We have all these drugs and uh, distractions uh, that that keep us away from really loving ourselves, which is most important. In you know, our, I, our I think you you kind of touched on something. You know, I. Uh, I spin my coffee, uh, as David Koss taught me, to uh, because it does make a difference. It makes it taste better, makes it's wine yep. taste better, and it'll take the fizz out of a Coca-Cola. But, <laughs> but uh, it's 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 like praying. I mean, if you pray over your food, you yep. are thanking God for what He gave you, the food right. He gave, whether it's animal or whether it's a plant. I mm -hmm. mean, I I may not give up beef. After yeah, yeah, no, you. Yeah. But the the best food I've ever had was grown by my grandmother mm -hmm. in her backyard in Weatherford, Texas. But, but there you go. That that, that word that is really what your show should be about the uh, that the villages is that you're coming together in a loving environment to love each other and the love doesn't have to be a totally sexual, it could be just friendship or helping with a garden or building a house or a teepee or a yurt or, or a baby. But it's living where you're not giving, you're not vaping the earth, you're not, uh, you're not sucking out the resources, you're uh, uh, giving back, I think it's the quote in the beginning, for me, when you give, you take. You, and that give and take is just like breathing, you got to breathe in and you got to breathe out, and you can do that with a soil or with a plant. You 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 uh, plant a seed and you harvest the fruit, and then you let it com compose, decompose there. You add uh, minerals, nutrients as you see fit or necessary. And uh, that's all that's the scientific. But very simply, you could plant a lot of different seeds, and whatever grows there, that's what you eat. So because uh, if you have a variety of seeds in a certain soil. Whatever's going to grow there, it's going to grow there. I mean, it's just it's just too simple. We don't we don't simplify our life. We have to have it complicated. We got to get a scientist to do the pH and the fertilizer and the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen and, and uh, carbon or whatever. Uh, we got to we got to get it down pat. We got to agree on these things. When in fact, the intuition of planting a uh, variety of seeds in in, the, in a certain soil will produce what Mother Nature has intended for that soil to produce. All right, David, we're we're almost out of time here. Is there any uh, contact information, any uh, thing that you'd like to get out that I don't already have up on my site? Uh, I think you got it, uh, pretty much all of it. Um, I'd like to remind everybody we started the show with uh, uh, you know, uh, call the first time that uh, it's very easy to see that all the money that we've created.
created as homeowners and workers in our society is offshore. Uh, the, the trillions of dollars that we may have gone off through usury offshore, and we have we have to bring that back uh, to our own in interdependence and a knowledge of where the money went, because that actually was stolen, and if all stolen property can be returned. So I see uh, every uh, every homeowner with a free home. I see every individual and family with free health care, and uh, I see us all free of uh, uh, the, the oblig obligatory monetary usury, uh, debt-based monetary system. That Absolutely. You got and right. And love to all. Pray, pray, pray. This is, <laughs> pray this, is what, this is you. You are sending me money to back me because this is exactly what I believe. They yeah. did it in Iceland. We can do it here, folks. We've got the communication. You're you're listening to it right now. You're yeah. either on YouTube. You're either on the internet. You're on my site. You're hearing me and David. David and I are going to be working together. We're going to put this together. All right. And I want you to be a part of it too. Okay. Yeah. This, I, uh, this ain't I a matter of about ruling. Five or ten minutes, and then I gotta, I gotta go pick up. Uh, I gotta go to my uh, t voluntary uh, kitchen work. All right. We're out of time. We're out of time here, David Sneegus. Thank you very much. We'll have you back on. I'd probably like to have you back on next week or uh, within uh, within two weeks anyway. Well, with, two, with two weeks would work fine. Okay. Yeah, the uh, information so you're putting out is extremely valuable. It'll be linked on my site. This show is extremely valuable. Send it out to everybody, folks. We're giving okay. you the straight scoop here. God bless you. Thank you, you all for listening. Thank you, David. Bye-bye now. Okay. Bye.